Hello, welcome to the aftermarket report with Miss Vegas and Jim. She'll be showing up about halfway through the report today. Today's date is August 18th, 2019. And the first one we're going to talk about is Atlanticus. Beautiful chart on this trade here. We had a 52 week high. As you can tell on 20 day, we're going to pull up the yearly. Yearly support on this is going to be right around the 646 for a low. We've had two, two real nice engulfing candles. It's been on a great run off the 200 EMA. Let's pull up the 20 day chart. Look at the 20 day real fast, one hour. We have a low support right here, which was a previous high of 646. With your second support probably right in here, maybe this is going to be your low support at 646. With your third support at 667 to 673. With your second support level, it's going to be right down here, right around the 687 to $7. And then that first one's going to be right here at 721. It can drop down to that $7 level, and that's going to be probably your strong place to get in if it decides to pull back. If not, it's going to break that 52 week high of 735. And that is um, ATLC. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be Luna. Luna. So they've had great earnings. They have real nice projection into the next year. They're pretty strong about it. We're going to go straight to the chart on Luna. Type in Luna. Luna's got a pullback support right here in this little channeled area of 540 to 552. That's going to be your low support for this entry. Your first support, third support's at 564, 574, and then 581 for your first. I think it will pull back to this high here of 552. And that'll be your strong entry for it to retrace and try to hit this triple top, which is now a quadruple. And that's going to be right at 593 with a resistance to break at 599 to $6. That's Luna. Low support right at the 548, 552 area, maybe down here at 540. With your third at 564, that's probably going to be your solid support at 574 and then 581 with a resistance to break of 593. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be one that I really, really like. This company, I really like this company. It's called Smart Glass Research Frontiers. This has been on a very bullish run. They've got we've talked about this many times before, so I don't need to go into too much details on it. But I am going to type in the ticker, and that is R E F R. Pull up the yearly chart. Let you look at it first. We've had a nice bounce off 92 cents all the way up to 480. With a 480 high, just came out Friday. I have two support levels on this trade at 5, 438 and 462. And I think we're going to hit that. And then your probably your equilibrium beam is around, around 451. So let's pull up the 20 day, take a good look at it. You see what I'm saying by that 538 from this previous high we had? Or it could pull back to this area, which it pulled back before, at 411 to 421 channel. But that first solid support is going to be right here at 438. Your second one's going to be right around this 460, with a resistance to break right around 486. That's REFR. -E and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be T. AT&T. &T. Everybody knows AT&T, so I'm not going to go into too much about it. We're going to look at the chart. I'm not as bullish as some people are on this because I have kind of a personal bias with them. But they are on a run. It did pull back here to the 31 area, double bottom down here at 31.59. And she ran on up, pulled back to 31.14, and then she ran up, found a new high. At 34.94, that's where we are at a double top. Low support is going to be right around this 3.30, I'd say 34 dollar area. That's going to be your low support for for re-entry if it decides to pull back. Your second one is going to be at 34.30, with your first support right here at 34.58, and 
with a double top resistance to break at 34.94. That's a double top resistance at 34.94. And that's going to be T. And then one more we're going to talk about is going to be Z Y M E. Z Y M E. Zinbera. This is definitely a pharmaceutical company, and it's one that we're going to be watching into next week. I'm going to type it in the room here, Z-Y-M-E. We had a 52-week high on it Friday, so let's look at the yearly chart. Pull up the yearly chart, and you can see that it's had a pretty nice run, too. 2019 has been a very good run for stocks. And if these fears of recession for America, I do not see it. But there's a big disconnect between Wall Street and the private sector, so always keep that in mind. Um, I'm still bullish on the Wall Street version of it, too. I think that's run on algorithms and the market, you know, poked back like it did just because of fear of the tariff trade shocks. But I'm 100% bullish on the private sector that's in America right now. Not on the world by far, but definitely 100% bullish on private sector in America. So we did have pullback level right here to right around, oh, I'd say low support is going to be right around that 2570. So let's pull up the 20. You can see the run we've had from ZYME all the way from 1072 all the way up to 2716 high with two huge engulfing candles actually three off that 34 EMA on a yearly daily so let's pull up the 20 day and take a good look at it we did have pull back here to 2312 and she's done nothing in the last three days but run all the way up to 27 that's about a 40 good four dollar bounce so I'm gonna call the support level no lower than this $25 area. I'm going to cloud that up with a red red line. That way I know that's going to be a solid buy if I want to get into this trade. Your third support is going to be right down here at $25.68, $25.97, and then $26.24 for your first. And that could pull back to that pretty easily. So pay attention to the red line support levels at 24.96 and 25.68. And we have to break a resistance of 26.81 to a double top of 27.16, 27.15 for a resistance breakout. Pullback support, $25. The first one, 25.68. And then you have your little trend lines that are in between, which is the 2597 and the 2624. And that's ZYME. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be a name changer. It was AQXP. Now it is NLTX. One. Okay, so we're just talking, I mentioned AQXP, but just to remind you all, and I forgot this myself, that AQXP was a merger, and it is now NLTX, which is the same thing. I mean, it's just called Neolucan Therapeutics, and they announced, obviously, that they, uh, of their merger transaction with AQXP, which actually just started on Monday, uh, August 12th. So, um, the company now has $65 million in cash and they have enough money now to fund their operations in through to 2021. I like that. Um, so now the new ticker is NLTX and uh, I really like this chart very much. I like that it's had an inside day. I like that the Bollinger, Bollinger pens are wide opening and showing a lot of good strength into the stock. Um, so Jim, what do you can tell us about this uh, stock here, NLTX, former AQXP from the merger. Okay, well, I'm going to try to find some support levels here on the yearly chart. We did bust past a yearly high, and that was right around the 317 area. And that's what we had to break. We are breaking down into like a squeeze pattern, maybe of a descending triangle where it could pull back to support level. And that's going to be right on 349, is what I'm just identifying just right in here. 
It also could be a pennant flag too that we're looking at. So it can bounce above. I noticed that the wicks are getting bigger and the base is getting smaller. So this could pull back to a low support at 349. And we have a couple of them in here. We have a 349, 367, 380, and 389. Resistance that we got a break is going to be the 403 area up to the 423 on a 20-day chart. Well, let's look at the 20-day chart. Yeah, I'm seeing the same kind of pattern here. I, I, I can't see it going any lower than down to 314. I think that might be a little too much. So I'm going to stick with my 349 as a low support. The second one's going to be right here at 367 with the first channel of support level at 380 to 389 with the resistance to break is going to be the 414 area. And that's going to be NLTX. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be CVRS. Yes, so CVRS is Corundus Vascular Robotics. You guys know I love robotics. They're in the healthcare medical appliance sector. And um, I really like the robotics industry. I mean, it's been done very, very well this year. And I think uh, we can see a lot more. I mean, this company has, don't forget, the robotics. We've talked about this company before. Um, they're the only one that has the FDA clearance uh, to do a lot of things with robot, robotic-assisted interventions. I mean, this is going to be amazing. I mean, they're going to play a huge role in redefining the catheter laboratory. I mean, you got to go to their website. I mean, I think it's like really cool. Their technology is just amazing. I mean, they got the robotic system for coronary and peripheral vascular interventions. So anything to do with the heart. And can you imagine like another doctor working with another doctor using the robot and helping help control this uh, to do these uh, medical procedures. So it's just fantastic. I really like their technology is just amazing. So um, CVRS, going back to this actual chart, I do like it. It's got a very strong uptrend. The stock is overbought. And I'm actually looking for this to have a range expansion. Um, looking definitely for this to have a continuation. It's strong once again. Um, you know, we did see the stock at one time around the 350 mark. And uh, looks like it's ready to have another bit of a move here. Jim, your thoughts on this chart, please. Yeah, um, we had this big, huge gap, and it was due to earnings. The earnings per share did miss, but also the earning, the sales were up from 4.57 million to 3.9 million. So that's what caused major probably this big gap that happened back on the eighth. And ever since then, she's ran in a straight line all the way, been consolidating at that price level. It did have a price target of 428, and that's where we are right now at 427. It did close at our after at hours at 427 Friday so it's kind of hard to draw a support and resistance level but I'm going to say it can't go really no lower than that 415 we might see under around the 405 for a strong buy with a resistance to break is going to be right there at 429 bring it up to a 437 high I want to pull up the yearly chart and let you have a look at the yearly real fast you can see the low support well now would be at 346 if it decides to knife to under that 405 and the resistance we got a break is going to be that 437 and I do have another support right here in that channel at 423 so let's pull up the daily take a look at the daily one minute yeah they don't look too interesting to me it looks like a very troubled stock I mean, it really did consolidate. It's just consolidated. It ain't moved. There's been no movement on it from 426 all day to 427. So uh, I'm kind of stunned right now. I haven't seen a chart like this in a while. So let me pull up that 20 day and get another look at it. Yeah. I have to, if I wanted to play this, it would have to be on a breakout or I'm not going to touch it. If it pulls back to the 405 and holds that 405 and starts to move up and I get a confirmation, I'll go ahead and ride it on up. But I do like this, this company, and I do like what it produces and what it does. But for right now, I'm just going to have to sit here and watch it and see what happens next week on Monday. See if it pulls back, holds that 405. That could be a small scalping position, 
or if it starts to break a resistance of 437 before I decide to get in the trade. CVRS. And if anybody else loves stocks more than Vegas and I do, let us know. ELSE is the next one we're going to talk about. Okay, so ELSE, this is uh, Electro Sensors, and this company is into so many different things. They're into accessories, they're into motor drive controls, they're into signal conditioners, they're into tachometers, they're into temperature sensors. I mean, they're just into so many things. Um, so you can definitely check out all their products, especially if you like electro sensors or the technology that's behind it. Um, but this one here, you know, this company's out in Minnesota. And uh, very weird chart, a little bit weird. Um, but if you actually look at this from a weekly perspective, um, this did have a volume surge on Friday. And it has a new uptrend is what I'm seeing. Um, it also has, you know, this is, I'm looking for this to have potentially a first swing trade. Um, and uh, if you look at, you know, like I said, this chart, Part, it is a bit weird because look at back in July, it had pulled back below 330. And we have multiple bottoms on this chart. Like we have one, two, three. I'm looking like four bottoms here. And now it's kind of bounced back up. And so I'm going to keep an eye on this because I saw that volume coming in. And that was quite the volume surge there on Friday. And so I think we should definitely keep a watch on this in terms of a swing trade or looking for a continuation. Uh, Jim might have other thoughts, but I'd like to hear what they are. And so, Jim, over to you on else, E-L-S-E. Yeah, we played, filled around here with the triple bottom down here at 320. And it did bounce up off that triple bottom just here last month, well, back on in June. Started bouncing on up. And we did have a resistance high up here. It did as a double top at my old employee number, 401. So you can see that back here on the yearly chart when we tried to break that before. So this could pull back to support level. I don't want to see it go no lower than 376. We're going to look at the 20 day real fast to see if that tells me a little different story. I'm going to, st well, we could pull back to this 369 area. That could be a solid support level. And I'm going to pull up that yearly one more time. See what I'm missing here. 365. And then I see another double top right in here, right around 364. Okay, my low support, I mean, this is not too big of a spread. This should hold its gain pretty well. 364 is going to be your low support. That little channel between 364 and 369. Your second support is going to be right at 376 with 382 as your first. And the resistance we need to get past is it going to be that 390. If I was day trading this, I'd look at the 390 and build one minute candle above that 390 for it to move up to have a triple top resistance breakout of 401. And that's E-L-S-E. -E. And you're willing to stop these at any time and, and copy and paste these charts. Just don't share them unless you put my name by them. The next one we're talking about is going to be... McDonald's, my favorite. Oh, how did I get Macy's nice up little... here? Okay. What's that? Oh, I got Macy's up here somehow. No, McDonald's. Yep. Okay, so I sent you a link, Jim, there for you to show a story on McDonald's. Um, you know, McDonald's, as you guys know, I really like this for a longer term hold. So for those of you that like longer term holds, McDonald's is one of my longer term holds. I won't be surprised to see this in the two fifties down the road. Um, you know, McDonald's uh did have um you know, some new international favorites. They're introducing them at their Chicago uh, location. And they're introducing all these, like, really interesting um, breakfast sandwiches from Cyprus with the halloumi English muffin. They're also introducing the uh, chicken bacon onion from France, the Manhattan salad. Isn't that funny? They're calling it Manhattan salad, and it's from France. Um... They're also introducing caramel dipped cones from South Korea. I mean, I don't know why they just don't introduce this all over the place. Um, but you know what? This particular location, I don't know if you guys know, but this is um, a 6,000 square foot uh, restaurant. And this location is located on 
1035 West Randolph Street. So that's a massive location. Um, huge, huge location. But anyhow, going back to the actual fundamentals of the stock, why I love McDonald's. Uh, besides, I love their fries. You guys know I love their fries. Um, you know, the stock's had a little bit of a run. It's had a pullback, but the weekly chart to me is still bullish. I mean, the stock uh, is at 218.47. We did see it go in the 220s, and that was a beautiful run when it did that, but it's pulled back. Uh, but, Jim, I want to hear what you think about McDonald's at this point because I'm watching McDonald's really also from an options perspective. Um, you know, so I like to trade this when the setup is there. We've traded this so many times, and we've had very good success. Um, if you're looking for option calls for the 225 strike, I mean, that has the most uh, open interest right now, but only because it's so cheap. It's $0.14, cents, uh, which is $14 a contract. Um, really, you want to get closer to being in the money because if the stock does have a move, obviously, you'll, your option value will go up a lot more and a lot faster. Um, so, Jim, I want to hear what you think about McDonald's because it is one of my favorites, and it's going to be on my must-watch the whole like every single day yep and i've been dying i mean love mcdonald's too i think mcdonald's has probably been one of our bullish bullet more bullish stocks that we've been following when every time it touches the 34 ema on a yearly chart on a daily yearly it's time to go ahead and get in this trade and take it up also it plays off that 9 ema very well so the strong buys off the 34 ema and uh, and always a buy off the nine EMA if you're looking at a yearly daily. So we do have a resistance. We got a break at the 221.11 area. We do have a 218.47 right now. This is a stock that um, we like to watch in the morning. And when we're looking at, let, let me pull up the 20 day real fast. So I'm going to call, I'm looking at this and I don't think it can go any lower than this 215.95 area. I think that would be your solid entry if it did decide to have a day where it wanted to pull back. This is how this stock trades. You can see on the daily here as it hit that high, it pulled back all day long, then the next day it bounced. Pulled back all day long, the next day it bounced. Now we've kind of created a little uh, symmetrical flag right here, a little pennant flag, and I think we're going to have an up uptick on this. So I'm going to call a resistance right at 219.95. That's the one we got to hit and break. And actually, it could be a little bit lower if I was going to adjust it. Let's go with 219, excuse me, 219.80. So somewhere in that channel between 219.80 and 219.95 is going to be your solid resistance. And we could get this back up to the highs. And that high is going to be right around the 221.11 to 221.39 area with a resistance high of almost 222. So low support and if you're looking at it like I said on on a yearly and I'm gonna pull that yearly up again if you're more of a swing trader you want to wait for it to pull back and hit that 34 and get in it off that 34 EMA. If you're more of a day trader you want to get off that and hit it off that 9 EMA. And I'm gonna magnify this up just a little bit and you can see what I'm talking about. We've had these little bounces where they come up and they and they bounce up and they go up above that nine EMA. So the resistance we got to break is going to be that 221.39. And that's going to be McDonald's. Please copy these charts down anytime you want or even join the chat room. And we talk about these every day on from open to close. And the next one we're going to talk about after McDonald's is going to be Shop, Shopify. Oh, my gosh. So this stock here, it's I got, I got to tell you, the stock's okay to trade. The options is brutal to trade because I find that the number of people that actually, I don't know, I don't understand it either. The number of people that actually like to buy the option call is very limited. So we're talking like just a couple hundred. We're not talking thousands like the ones that buy McDonald's. And, you know, so if you buy one of these Shopify option calls and you decide you're going to buy it and then you're going to sell it, like sometimes you can't even sell it. Like you have to wait, especially if you want a certain price, you're waiting to get your order filled. So I find it's a tough one to trade from the option side. 
I've only probably traded it personally twice because it's been so tough. The liquidity is just not there. And I don't get it. I don't get it. But, um, you know, Shopify's had a nice spinning top. Um, it had a range contraction here. And, uh, I mean, I think Shopify has the potential to have a continuation. Um, but, Jim, you know, what do you think about Shopify? Because lately, um, you know, it's, it's on the right track here. I mean, I know people that are long on the stock. Um, but what are your thoughts about where Shopify? I mean, Shopify, by the way, a Canadian company as well. Really great success story. Um, they do very well. And this just keeps growing and growing. I mean, I'm not going to be shocked to see this stock to be in the $400 price range eventually. And I won't even be surprised if that happens by the end of the year or sooner. So let's hear about Shopify. As you guys know, they do the e-com stores and uh, they help businesses build their business. Let's well, hear it, Jim, this on would, Shopify. This would have been a great long-term investment if you're really long on something from three years ago. It was down here with a three-year low at 37.74. As you wow. see, as you see these trend lines on here, they, I represent each year as a different color. I have the red one for 2016, the gold one for 2018, and the blue one for 2019. And look at what happened here in 2019. I mean, I mean look 18. at it from January. Look at January all the way to now. That is yeah. crazy. I mean, this was under, like, what was the price back in January, like beginning of January? Let's see, it looks like it was under 150. It was down here right around 117 back there when wow. we had the crash. Wow, I mean, can you imagine having that from then to now? I mean, insane. I mean, even if you would have had like a, I don't know, 500 shares or 100 shares of this, you would have doubled your money, tripled your money by now. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. 100 shares. That in one year period. Insane. Insane. Nice little climb. It's touched down on that 34 three different times. And then we had a resistance break up here at 374.24. And beautiful at that 370.24 resistance level. We did have a high at 372.36. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. And uh, I found this little support right here at the 348 level. So I can pull back there. We're kind of in a descend, uh, ascending p flag pattern right here, maybe for a new breakout back up to that double top high. We could be a triple top high up here at 370.24. That's the resistance we got to break. But the first resistance is going to be right here at 360.38. Then that second one. This is one that can really fly. I mean, you see how it dipped here hard that day from. All the way from 370 all the way down here to 348 and then created a consolidated period but bounced up 10 bucks within that day and been pulled on back and then she bounced back up and broke higher than that previous high we had on Thursday so this can get back up to a quadruple top area of 370 24 and move on up higher or it can pull back to support level and that's going to be at the 348.53 and that's going to be Shopify shop. Keep it on your watch list. And the last one we're going to talk about is going to be the bonus. And that's going to be everybody goes to and Walmart. Okay. So you know what? Walmart, I got to say, we traded this really well on Friday. Like we traded the, I called the breakout on the stock and, or a reversal, if you want to call it that. And it reversed beautifully. And we were able to take the option calls to over 100%. And then we also saw it reversing. So then we took advantage and flipped the trade and went from, we sold our calls and then flipped it and bought puts. And we took that to over a hundred percent. So we had a really nice ride with Walmart. Um, but definitely keep a watch on the stock because, you know, Walmart is impressing me. Um, you know, they, it has a pocket pivot. Uh, it is an earnings mover, by the way. Um, they did have their earnings on uh, Walmart. And, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I gotta tell you, like I have been to Walmart. I mean, I don't go there every single day, obviously, but whenever I have been to Walmart, um, they, the place is always very busy, like packed, busy. I mean, I just never go there when there's no one there. Um, the revenue for Walmart, just so you know, increased $2.3 billion. Hello. That's a lot of money. Um, they're, um, 
uh, e-com store, by the way, because you know how they have the online grocery shopping? That is helping with the revenue. Their e-com sales growth is up 37%, not just from people shopping to buy Walmart products that get delivered home, but I'm talking about the grocery shopping. Um, also, their Sam's Club sales increased as well. And uh, their, you know, their operating income is at a constant currency, which was better than planned with very strong results in the U.S. businesses. Um, the, else, the other thing, too, is that Walmart has good cash flow as well. Uh, so, I mean, listen, they know, how to run, they know how to run their business. They do well with Sam's Club. They do well in Walmart international locations and also across Walmart U.S., um, they also did hire a new CTO. His name is Suresh Kumar. He's going to be running the uh, technology area. Also, he's going to be the chief development officer. Uh, also, Walmart has more than 2,700 grocery pickup locations and more than 1,100 delivery locations in the U.S. They also have this um, next day delivery service that they now offer to 75% of the U.S. population. And do you know that they now have a what's called a Sam's Garage app at Sam's Club. So you can actually, I guess, book service repairs or oil changes and things like that. Also, they launched a blockchain platform for Walmart China. So talk about all these different things they've been doing. Um, and the other thing, too, is Walmart also has a what they call a U.S. solar agreement for 36 community solar gardens. I mean, they're just doing everything. Um, they're just in, they're just involved in so many things. I mean, and they have a new e-com fulfillment center also that they opened up in Mexico. That is just amazing. So I really am impressed with Walmart and the technology that they're developing and have developed and been and launched. So Walmart is definitely one to watch. Also one to watch longer term for investment. All right, so here's the yearly chart. I put these little two dots right here to show you that it did have a high up here at 105.67 and pulled back pretty strong down to 85. This is on a yearly daily. So here in the past 2019, right when we had that big crash on the SPY, she done nothing but gone up. We did have a pullback here after the shootings and, and I don't know what the sell off for was, but yeah, that's probably what it was also because, um, you know, the earnings was raised, the guidance was raised for 2020. I mean, everything was, you know, they beat sales. I mean, so I think that had to do with, you know, what happened out there in the media. So uh, definitely uh, well, heartfelt less, sentiment for sure to yeah. El Paso and South Haven for yeah. sure. Yeah, we had some idiot here in our local Walmart try to act cocky about it, but he was just trying to show his gun rights off, but. She did ahead, and she did pull back to that support level at 105.67, which was that previous high that we had, and then bounced up off it here in the past couple of days. So the resistance that we do need to break is going to be that 115.31 area. Let's pull up the 20-day chart. I'm going to get rid of this here because it's kind of optical illusion for me. Delete drawing. Did have a low right down here at 105.01. But I've got low support at 108.34. This is the kind of trade that you also want to watch on the momentum. You know, if the momentum shows that it's going to be red, it's probably going to pull back most of the day. If the momentum is going to start out green, it might just move up all the day, the whole day. But this is one that you definitely we did have a nice little breakout here, big engulfing candle from that low support at 105 all the way up to 113, a good $8 bounce. And then she consolidated the next day. This is a TTM trend chart that I'm looking at. And then she bounced into close and also after hours and pulled back a little bit Friday. Found support here at 112.27. I got a low support down here at 111.68. It's going to be my first solid support if it decides to pull back. Or it could pull back to these other three. If not, it can break the resistance up here at 114.71 and create a new high at 115.31, which we previously had. But for right now, that hard resistance is going to be that 114.71.
this is a momentum play watch out X first thing out of the gate if it decides to go down just be patient if it decides to move up maybe buy you a small portion of options to go up but the consolidated period resistance that we got to break on the 20 day is going to be the 11338 and that's it and that's the end of the market report I'm going to pull up the website here and I want you to look at something real fast we do have some links on the side here we have a Twitter bird follow us on Twitter hit that follow button so we can get some more followers we just started this last month and we're up to 469 followers already so and we also on the same application we have our both stock twit links mine and then Vegas is here on top she's the boss Pintergeist Facebook then our YouTube video please subscribe Ring that bell on our YouTube videos to hit following updates. Miss Vegas, anything else? No, I just want to thank everyone for listening to the extended version of the uh, I Love Stocks market report. Like I said, Jim, are, you know, back. We just took a little bit of a break. The markets were just too red and just really tough to, you know, probably talk about different stocks and things to trade. Um, but you know what? Uh, we're looking more for some swing trade opportunities opportunities and uncrowded stocks and uh, we'll be back with the videos so please follow subscribe reshare the videos with people we appreciate the followers really appreciate when you guys give us comments I read every single one Jim reads every single one we comment to every single one so if you like the video it sucks or you don't like it or you want to see a ticker please let us know uh, welcome to come by and visit the room we're always here to help so please feel free to comment on that note have an amazing Sunday and we'll see you all Monday tomorrow August 19th this is the after after Sunday's edition market report on August 18th, 2019. And have a great day, and we love stocks.